I'm Nick Armita with Lone Lepus Controls, and today I installed the Isaac Simulator from NVIDIA. This is a brand new piece of software that's able to really realistically simulate your manufacturing environment before you actually install any equipment. It's from NVIDIA. It's pretty cool. I've um, got my fancy new graphics card, so I want to take it for a test run. So on its face, uh, it looks like the most boring video game ever. Uh, from here, we see the outside of a warehouse, but once we start zooming in, that's when things get interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and enter this warehouse. And so you'll see something if you're, you know, ever worked there. It's very familiar. It's boxes, shelves, all sorts of equipment, um, basically things that are pre-made like pallets, cardboard boxes, totes, bins, shelves, everything that you'd want to simulate in your environment. So it looks pretty realistic. And uh, of course, the physics are there to match as well. So they partnered with a few different companies, one of them being at Universal Robots, and they created some quick samples. So I'm going to go ahead and create this scenario now that's going to load a standard palletizing type of application. So this is relatively common in the industry. Anytime you have product that's finished and ready to ship out, you're generally talking about some sort of palletizing. So basically any warehouse in the world is going to have an application like this. Um, some of the time people are still actually grabbing these heavy boxes and loading them themselves. So that's where this comes in handy. What you're going to see here is uh, really nice 3D modeling, really accurate physics, and a really good lighting. Uh, so the whole thing is actually can be programmed inside of Python using the Isaac SDK. What that means is that traditional developers, kids out of college, very uh, talented software developers will be able to program these robots. Before, industrial applications were generally programmed by ladder logic, more archaic type of languages. So with high-level languages like Python, you're able to be much more powerful, much quicker, and tap into a much greater talent pool. So that's what I'm personally really excited about this, just the implications and everything has just really, really jumped tenfold. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start this scenario. So you'll see here the robot moves into place. Of course, it won't move that fast in real life, but still, um, it moves pretty accurately compared to what you would expect. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click Perform Tasks. So this is just a canned sample showing how you would palletize totes. Um, obviously, you don't really palletize totes that often, but uh, it's, it's whatever. They're NVIDIA, they're software guys, not, not hardware guys. That's where we come in. So you'll see the robot grabbing the tote like you'd expect with a standard single vacuum cup gripper. We can go over here and watch it. It moves just like you'd expect a robot to. It moves up. Our approach position moves down with a nice linear move and sets it. You see even the shadows there. I love that how good it looks. Drops it down and continues on. Now look, we have another bin right here. Let's go ahead and add another bin as well. I want to see if I can get one to flip over. There we go. So now we'll see the robot continuing on, palletizing toast just like you'd expect in any other application. So the nice part about this is that you can basically simulate your parts with your 3D models, add in the weights, center of gravities that you'd expect, and it will interact with it really close to like it would in the actual manufacturing environment. One of the big struggles that you have is you don't really understand how automation is going to respond to your environment. So what this acknowledges is that you do need a good way to simulate what your parts are going to do whenever you're automating. What that does is it speeds up your development time because it's clearing up the unknown unknowns, that favorite term that everyone in automation is familiar with. The things you figure out, unfortunately, a little bit later on at the line. It's not your fault, it's just something that happens that's really impossible to understand all the nuances of your application. And so here, a nice little thing I saw is that they added this little corner block. And if you're familiar with automation, you'll understand that that is what we call a repick station. So you'll notice the robot is actually putting them on their face, upside down, I guess, if you will. So what it's going to do here, it's going to pick it up and see it knocking that bin out of the place. That's really cool because that's something that you wouldn't usually get with any kind of simulation software. And even notice how it kind of settles into place. It doesn't quite slide down. That's due to the friction of the physics in the system. So the robot sets it up, goes down to grab it, and then picks it up just like it would any other tote and places it in the palletizing area according to the pre-programmed routine. You'll see it here. It looks like it's starting to stack. Stacks nicely, drops it, and settles right into place. So really what this means for robot development is much more rapid deployment. As I mentioned before, you're now able to get true programmers involved in creating these systems. One, of, one I think the neatest part of this uh, Isaac SDK is the ability to actually use cloud computing to do all of your uh, development. What that means is that anyone in the world with access to an AWS EC2 instance, if you're familiar with the term, 
will be able to develop these programs remotely. So all you have to have is a, basically a laptop. You tap into that server and you're now able to create these programs without having to have a $2,000 graphics card or really intensive GPU. It's basically programming as a service from anywhere in the world. So really cool there. Another neat application of this too, of course, is the ability to add NVIDIA's uh, famous AI uh, tools. So not only are you able to do a really good simulation of a basic robot program, but now you're able to add in 3D vision, uh, part recognition, uh, neural networks, uh, reinforcement learning, uh, convolutional neural networks, 3D and 2D, all sorts of really cool things, uh, really just pretty much adding cut and paste AI models so you can make your robot much more powerful. So that's it in a nutshell. This is the Isaac simulator. Like I said, if you have access to an Amazon EC2 server and a, someone who knows their way around a Linux device, then you could be running this yourself. Um, grab yourself someone intelligent in college, give them this tool, um, and then you will be able to basically create automation without even having to own any hardware. Really cool stuff. I uh, just wanted to show that today. This was released just earlier this week, so I was happy to be one of the first people to mess around with it. I'm excited to get a little bit deeper with this and see exactly what it can mean. So this is it, the Isaac Simulator, powered by NVIDIA with help from Universal Robots.